Today we're going to be looking at another trade tree that started in 2014. I don't know what it is about that year, but there were a lot of great players moved. And one of the more underrated players who was traded that year was Martin Prado. This trade may not look like much at first, but over the years it's developed some really cool paths, with one team getting a perfect game and the other getting a batting title. Prado had joined the Yankees at the 2014 deadline, and he was phenomenal. The 30-year-old utility man appeared at second, third, and in the outfield. He slashed 316, 336, 541 for a 145 OPS plus and 2.1 war in just 31 games. With two years remaining on his contract, and with infield depth to spare, the Yankees decided to sell high on Prado. The Marlins were looking to upgrade their infield after the 2014 season. They acquired second baseman Deke Gordon from the Dodgers, but they were looking for someone to play third base as well. So they made a trade with the Yankees for Prado. So here's the trade. The Yankees got first baseman Garrett Jones and two young pitchers, Nathan Navaldi and Domingo Herman. And the Marlins received Martin Prado, pitcher David Phelps, and some cash to help cover part of Prado's contract. So how did the Yankees do? Well, Jones backed up Mark Teixeira at first base for 2015. The Yankees as an organization loved having him around, but he wasn't very good. He slashed 215, 257, 361 for an OPS plus of 67 and minus 0.6 war in 57 games. And in August, he was released to make room for some pitching depth. Ivaldi spent two years in the Yankees' rotation towards the bottom as they had a pretty strong rotation in front of him with CeCe Zabathia and Masahiro Tanaka. He was reliable when healthy. He pitched to a 23-11 record and 94 ERA plus across 48 starts and a few long relief appearances. But he was plagued with injuries while in the Bronx, and his 2016 was cut short by a partially torn UCL in August. With only a year remaining on his contract, and Evaldi expected to spend all of 2017 recovering from Tommy John surgery, the Yankees released him. He put up 3.6 war in New York. Herman reached the majors with the Yankees in 2017. He was good out of the bullpen with a 147 ERA plus in 14 and two-thirds innings. In 2018, he was converted to a starter, and in his first start, he threw six no-hit innings. He struggled the rest of the year, but he rounded into form in 2019. He finished the season with an 18-4 and record and 110 ERA+. Plus. His 2019 was cut short due to a domestic violence suspension that cost him all of 2020. Herman returned to the Yankees in 2021. He spent the next three seasons with the team. He wasn't nearly as effective as before. He pitched to an 11-17 and record and 98 ERA+. Plus. However, in June of 2023, he threw the 24th perfect game in MLB history. He struck out nine batters on just 99 pitches. It was also the fourth perfect game in Yankees history, which gives them the most perfect games by any team. In August, Herman entered treatment for alcohol abuse and was placed on the restricted list for the rest of the season. He became a free agent after the season, and while he hasn't signed anywhere at the time I'm recording this, it's safe to say he won't be returning to the Bronx. In his six seasons with the Yankees, Herman posted 4.6 war, though many Yankees would probably argue that the off the field headaches that came with Herman lessened that value. So with Herman leaving, the Yankees' side of this trade is done, and they got 7.6 war. But you may be seeing there's not a lot of trade here. The Yankees, you know, got these three players, they didn't trade any of them, and they've all left the organization. But the other side of this tree has some really interesting parts, and that's really the motivation behind doing this trade tree. Now, how did the Marlins do? How did Prado do? Well, he slotted in at third base for them, and his first two seasons were very successful. He slashed 297, 349, 406 for a 109 OPS+, plus, and 7 0.2 war across 282 games. He was particularly great against left-handed pitching. In 2016, he put up a 424 average and 1068 OPS. Heading towards free agency, the Marlins extended him on a three-year, $40 million deal. Now, unfortunately for both Prado and the Marlins, that extension aged like milk. Various injuries landed him on the disabled list seven times between 2017 and 2018, limiting him to just 91 games. When he was finally healthy enough to play most of the season in 2019, he was limited to mostly first base and pinch hit appearances, and he'd fallen off hard. He was the third least valuable player in all of baseball that year with a minus 1.5 war. After the 2019 season, Prado's contract expired and he retired. In his five years with the Marlins, Prado put up 5.7 war. Phelps joined the Marlins rotation in 2015, and he wasn't all that good. In 112 innings, he pitched to an 85 ERA plus and 6.2 Ks per nine. And heading into 2016, Miami decided to convert him to the bullpen. He spent 2016 as the Marlins' primary setup man, usually pitching the 8th inning. And that year, he hit 25 holds and career bests of 172 ERA+, plus and 11.8 Ks per 9 in 86 and 2 thirds innings. In 2017, he regressed a little, and heading towards the trade deadline, the Marlins found themselves nearly 15 games out of first place. 
With a year and a half remaining before free agency, they moved Phelps. In 245 and two-thirds innings in Miami, Phelps put up 3.1 war. Phelps was traded to the Mariners for four prospects, number seven-ranked outfielder Brian Hernandez, number 21-ranked pitcher Brandon Miller, number 29-ranked pitcher Pablo Lopez, and unranked pitcher Lucas Schiraldi. Now, most of these are pretty quick. Hernandez, Miller, and Schiraldi never made the majors. They were all released by the Marlins in 2019 or 2020. But what turned into the centerpiece here is Pablo Lopez. He reached the majors with the Marlins in 2018. He struggled his first couple years, but during the lockdown short in 2020 season, he broke out. And from 2020 to 2022, he was one of the more underrated starters in MLB, with a 120 ERA plus and 63 starts. In 2021, he had one of the more remarkable games baseball's ever seen. Pitching against the Braves, Lopez struck out the first nine batters he faced, setting an MLB record. With a year remaining before free agency, the Marlins traded Lopez. In his time with Miami, Lopez produced 8.5 war. Lopez was traded, along with prospects Byron Chorio and Jose Salas, to the Twins for infielder Luis Arias, the reigning AL batting champion. Arias improved on his previous season in 2023 by winning another batting title and silver slugger, making another All-Star game, and finishing 8th in NL MVP voting. In 147 games, he slashed 354, 393, 469 for a 133 OPS plus and 4.9 war. So overall, the Marlins got 22.2 war out of this trade, and they still have Arias for two more seasons. So the Marlins are the clear winners of this trade for me. While the Yankees didn't give up much at face value, the Marlins managed to turn Phelps into a group of prospects and develop Pablo Lopez into a legit MLB ace. And then they flipped him for Luis Arias, who's one of the best hitters in baseball. Anyways, let me know down in the comments what you think, who you think won this trade, if there's any other trades you want to see me cover, and I'll see you all in the next trade tree.